Hello everybody and welcome to Welcome in Silver Bullet, a series of videos in which I will kind of walk you through a bunch of different features in Silver Bullet to give you a little bit of an overview of all the functionality that's there. In this very first video, we're really going to cover the bare bone basics, right? Um, we're not even going to talk about having multiple pages, we're just going to talk about Markdown, how it works, and some of the kind of ways that Silver Bullet gives you out of the box to manipulate this type of um, text. So let's start right there. So first, like this is Silver Bullet, right? This is what it looks like. Um, although it may look like a WYSIWYG kind of word process UI, what is really going on behind the scenes, and this becomes visible when you select all the text, is that this is showing is a nice rendering basically of uh, a language called Markdown. And Markdown is basically an ASCII format. It's a plain text format, and this is how your pages are kept on disk, um, that has special codes in there, like the hashes and the asterisks and the, the, the square brackets and things like that, that suggests like, hey, this is a header, this is a list, this is bold, this is italic. Um, it doesn't, like, because it's plain text, it doesn't actually manipulate that text, it just kind of indicates what its intention is, right? However, what Silver Bullet does through a feature called Live Preview, which is a feature that was, I think, originally popularized by Obsidian, is that it renders your uh, markdown in a way that looks much more like what you see is what you get. Um, the way that works, so like the moment you put your cursor in a, a piece of text where a certain markdown is type of code is applied, you will then start to see the actual code behind the scenes. So in this case, it shows you that this hash is being used to create a header, double hash for a second level header, and so on. Um, Markdown supports all kinds of things, bold, italic, links, uh, code blocks, stuff like this, right? The way you enter that as well, either you just type the code by hand, so you can say, I'm going to make this text bold, um, or you use one of the many keyboard shortcuts. So there's commands for many, uh, easily applying markup codes. Uh, for instance, for bold, it's command B or control B. For italic, it's command I on Mac and control I on, on Windows and Linux, and so on. Um, headers, there's slash commands for that. We'll get to slash commands in a minute, not um, uh, direct commands. And links, like the easiest way to do that is just copy and paste a link from elsewhere, selecting the text that you want to link now, and then you paste, right? And that turns your selected text into a link. The moment you click on that link, it will open that page in a new tab or window. Um, if you want to just navigate to the, not into the link, but like just the link text, because of course, if you click it, you actually open it. You can hold Alt or Option on Mac and click there, and then it will move your cursor there. Right? This is a common thing that people run into. Just hold Alt, Alt, Option, and, and click on the, the, the place where you want to go, and you will go there, right? I hinted at commands. Uh, so we have this thing called a command palette over here. You can activate it by clicking there, or what I usually do is do command or control slash. And then you'll see a whole long list of commands that are supported in Silver Bullet as you have it installed right now. Um, you can scroll through it and find what you want. You can also search this list. So in a minute, we're going to look at outline commands. An easy way to find all the outline commands is to simply type outline. Uh, that will filter down the list to just uh, the commands that are there. Some of these commands are so rare that you run them that you can probably just run them by, by name. But as you kind of get more into the use of Silver Bullet day to day, you probably want to switch to using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. And those are all conveniently listed here to the right, right? So for the outline command, there's Control Alt square brackets and all this type of thing. I'm going to demonstrate many of these features in a minute, but this is, if you don't remember what each command is, just look at the command palette, filter down the list to whatever command you look uh, are interested in, and then you'll find the keyboard shortcuts there too. I mentioned outlines, so let's look at outlines. What is an outline? The outline is an idea, and actually is very common use case of Silver Bullet, where you're in a meeting and while people are talking, you're not writing prose, you're not like writing full stories, you generally just take bullet point lists. And those bullet items, of course, in Silver Bullet are of a silver color, because this is Silver Bullet, right? Um, but then 
maybe afterwards or even while you're taking these notes, you may want to manipulate this list. Or maybe this list gets really long and you want to kind of fold it or collapse it and move some stuff around. And Silver Bullet has a bunch of built-in commands to do just that. So you can, for instance, fold this item uh, so that all the children will be hidden. So they're still there in the document. There's still this hint of the triple dot. You can click that to expand it again or use keyword shortcuts, right? So that's one thing that ha that works in um, bulleted lists. You can also do this with headers. So headers, you can just collapse the whole thing. I think it works here too, right? And everything hierarchically, let's say, is then folded underneath it. So that's the most basic of, of uh, outline commands. Uh, generally, if you add a new item, it will immediately put a new item underneath at the same level. If you want to go one level deeper, one level deeper at any point you can hit tab that's usually my workflow that will indent the whole thing shift tab outdents the whole thing you can also use uh, option alt uh, shift here to <laughs> change the, the 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 nesting level and that actually uh, operates on also the children so if i want to kind of indent the whole outlines part of my outline i can do that here as well right I can move items up and down uh, as well, up, 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 down, down, down. This also, again, takes all the children's, children with it, if that's what I want, um, and so on. So this is kind of like some basic outline commands. If you're really into outlining, you probably are missing things here. Like you cannot zoom in, for instance, into an outline that's not supported. But if you're just a, let's say, casual <laughs> outline user, uh, these features can already be very useful to you. I use them all the time myself. All right, slash commands. So there's a bunch of ways of triggering commands. There's commands through the command palette. You can use keyboard shortcuts, but you can also use slash commands. Uh, a slash command, you trigger it by typing slash. It has to uh, succeed like, uh, like a space or empty line. And then it basically offers you a convenient way to insert a piece of markdown code that is kind of predefined. Um, some of these actually can uh, manipulate existing things. So for instance, a common thing for me is that I have an item somewhere. Um, this item is actually a task I realize later on, and then I can do slash task, and now I'm turning this item into a task, right? So that's a convenient slash command you can use. There's also slash commands for other things, like I can never remind remember what the table syntax in, in markdown is so there's a table uh, slash command and of course tables live preview as well so the moment you move your cursor out then it actually looks like a nice looking table with I think yeah, you know, uh, different color cells and stuff like that so that's there um, there's a whole bunch of other ones there's also the emoji completer by the way I'm just thinking about that uh, if you can, if you don't know shortcuts for all the different emoji, you can use colon syntax and then get Santa Claus there and insert Santa Claus. So that's all built in. Uh, so yeah, that's slash commands. You can use many of the ones that are built in. Uh, you can create your own, but we'll get to that in future sessions. Tasks. So I mentioned tasks. Tasks again are nothing special really in, in Markdown. It's just a special syntax using these square brackets. If you put your an X inside this bracket, which makes it look like a checked box, right? You will notice that indeed the task is checked. You don't have to type that by hand. You can just toggle, toggle the task like this, which will then update you know the X or no X underneath, right? If you're really like some people build task management systems with this, I use this myself for my little to-do task list. There's particular use cases where this is uh, very useful. We'll get to that in the future. Uh, but anyway, you can create tasks fairly easily. Then what will happen, uh, you will notice, is if you create a page with a few more items. So actually, yeah, let me actually show you some useful slash commands that I use all the time. So here I have like, some notes for this particular meeting and then I have like another thing and then I say well actually this was from yesterday or whatever you have yesterday's date something else now I have a couple of headers here and this page is starting to get well it's not really long but it tends to happen that you create a long page um, now I don't see it now but if I actually refresh my widgets or if I would navigate around when I get back to this page 
it will add a table of contents. So a table of contents by default, you can configure this in, to act differently, will start to appear in pages where you have three or more headers. And it's a convenient way. Well, it acts like a table of contents basically, right? So you can click on the thing there. Um, so it looks a bit weird right now because I created the, this particular one as a second level header. So now it's top level. Um, ah, yeah, you can update this thing by clicking that or use Alt Q, which kind of re renders all your, all your widgets. Um, and it shows you here the, the, the outline of your page. You can click there and immediately jump to that section of the page. That's convenient. All right, this is how far I want to get on this very first video. We're 10 minutes in. I think that's fine, that's enough. In the next session, we're going to talk about multiple pages, how to navigate between pages, and things like that. See you next one on the next one.